Hello and welcome back to the channel. My name is Eddie Jennings from EJSLLC.com and this is going to be another one of my practice videos for the RHCSA exam. I'm glad you're able to uh, join me for this. Remember these videos aren't designed necessarily to be authoritative information about the concepts for the RHCSA, but rather it's me going um, through the objectives kind of as a test for me to see if I feel like I'm confident in being able to talk about the objectives and, um, and also uh, show some ways of how to prepare for them. Perhaps in your own journey toward the Red Hat Certified System Administrator exam, you know, you, you might find uh, the way that I handle something differently than what you do, and it might help you with your own studies. Hey, you know, this is another way of thinking about it and such. And then for me, the benefit comes from talking about the objectives, and then I get a sense of, do I actually know what I'm talking about? So hopefully when I take the exam, which will be in uh, about a month and a week, um, I'll, I'll, I'll be able to do well with it. As always, um, if you enjoy the content of the video, make sure you click like and subscribe to the channel. Ring the bell when you do. Feel free to share this with anyone that uh, you might, that, or rather, might find it um, useful in their own uh, studies for our CSA or people just like listening to somebody talk about Linux. And feel free to leave your own comments and such, especially if I happen to mention something that's incorrect. Hopefully I won't do that, but but if I do, you know, by all means leave a comment. A, it'll uh, help prevent some confusion if for others that are watching, and B, it might, uh, you know, it'll, it'll help me as far as making sure I have the right information for, um, for the exam. So, the uh, topic in this video, this is under in the understanding using the essential tool um, category of objectives, and this is create hard and soft links. So I have my um, my KVM host here, which I'm uh, using cockpit. The the microphone in this whole area is a little bit nicer than the one I have on my headset, so I figured I'd give it a spin for the video. So let me log in to um, KVM here. And I've installed the virtual machines piece. We're going to go to my um, server with GUI. And to be able to see the console, the VM actually has to be running. It's a little different than Vert Manager. And I've uh, while while this is booting up, I um, I don't mind the uh, the cockpit um, machines piece for for managing VMs. It is very much. Uh, feature poor compared to what you have with Vert Manager. I know that Vert Manager is going away, I'm uh, or not necessarily going away, but is 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 be either is or is being deprecated. I can't re remember off the top of my head, but I do hope that um, that more features will will come to to uh, cockpit. So if they are getting rid of uh, Vert Manager, you know, hopefully we'll have somewhat feature parity. So we should. Yep, yeah, we have our console here, and one thing. Um, this is on a, a, a Windows machine that I'm accessing this. In order for for this to work, um, or at least for me doing this in a browser, the console type has to be set to VNC. If you set this to Spice, it will not, well, it probably will work, but you'll have to do some configurations and such, but just kind of working out of the box, have it set to VNC. So I have my VM here, let me log in. And we'll get into hard and soft links. So. Um, these are basically the same as shortcuts, or at least um, soft links are in, in, in the Windows world. And uh, what, a, what a, a link is, in particular a soft link, is a reference to another file. So let me go into my terminal here, see if I have anything on the desktop. I do. All right. Well, we'll just do the, um, the home directory here. I'm going to touch, uh, or we'll use echo this is a test file. Yep, did exactly what I told it to do. Echo that. Uh, test file dot text. All right, so now if I already cat that, you now we have our little test file here. And a soft link is a way basically to make like a pointer to that file or a shortcut to that file. So if I were to do, um, the command for making a link is the ln command. So ln-s for soft link, also known as a symbolic link. We will put the target of the link. This is something that always throws me off. I, for like almost everything else, like tar and such, you put the the thing you're creating and then whatever it is you're, you're affecting. Um, but with link, 
it is it's it, it's backwards and sometimes it messes with my head. And so we're just going to call this link um, link to test. All right. And if I were to do ls dash l, we see link to test here. This has a um, pointer or a little arrow pointing to test file. And so if I were to access link to test, so cat link to test, I will get exactly what is in um, in test file. It is literally a shortcut that is pointing to um, to test file. That and really this is, this is kind of all, all all there. Well, not necessarily all there is. Of course, there's, there's, I'm sure you can go into more depth with it, but the basics of what a, a, a soft link is, that's what you have. If I were to, let me make, um, let me rename test file. So, so let's do PowerShell there, rename item. But MV test file, we'll call it test file dot old. And if I were to do ls dash l, notice how this is now complaining that, that this link is broken. If I were to cat link to test, it's going to complain that there is no such file or directory because the um, the the file name is is gone. But if I were to change the um, the name back, and this is kind of I didn't realize this this will blink in um, rel eight uh, or CentOS eight, which is what I'm using. But if I were to do mv test file and change the name back, test file dot text ls dash l and we see that the um, that the the link's been restored. Now, a couple of things to, to keep in mind with this. Notice how you see the L here for the type. Notice the permissions with this. This is seven seven seven. Everything ha everyone has access to everything. That is not affecting the permission of the actual file. For example, if I were to um, chmod Zero 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 on test file dot text. All right, test file now has no permissions at all. If I were to try to cat test file dot text, I get permission denied. If I were to try to cat the link, I will also get permission denied because the actual permissions that are in effect are the permissions for the thing to which you are linking, not the actual link. It's um, itself. So let me change those permissions back. Six six four. Yeah, six six four. Test file dot text. Yep, that looks right. And now, if I were to cat the link, there we go. Um, if I were to remove this link, so let me just try rm link to test. I get the space there. All right. And that link is now gone. But notice that the test file is still there. So if you were to, to, to get rid of your sim link, it's not going to, to get rid of the file. One nice thing about sim links is that they can link across different file systems and such. Um, that is not something that you can do with a hard link that, 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 that we're about to get to. One place where you'll you'll see sim links and you might not, not even think about it is with system D targets, such as if I were to do um, system CTL get default. My default target is graphical.target. And if I were to change that to uh, multi-user target, so system I'll do that with sudo system CTL set default multi-user.target oh, multi-user notice it says created sim link in Etsy system D default target and that's that's a sim link to the actual um, target in the uh, USR lib directory and if I were to go if I were to ls dash l um, etsy system d system, we see there that scroll up just a bit. 
default.target is a symlink to that. So that's this is kind of a symlink in action. And it kind of makes sense because rather than having to do some kind of configuration that tells that, you know, makes the individual targets be, maybe that file needs to be in a different spot, we just use um, default.target. And the act, the act of setting your default is simply just pointing this symlink to the, the right place. So the next thing are hard links. Now hard links get into something called inodes. So let me clear my screen and ls dash, I believe it's i for, I'll do li, that will show the inode, yes. So this right here is an inode. An inode is, and this is gonna be a terribly simplified definition of it, but it's basically your little spot in the file system. All right, and what the, if I were to, if I were to do a hard link, basically what I am doing is making another pointer to that particular inode. Let me show you what I'm talking about. So if I were to do just ln, and I do test file link, oh, I have to do the target first, see, so I'm saying I tend to make that mistake. Test file link, all right, ls-l, all right. Notice how this looks like just a regular file. And if I were to do ls-li to show the inode, notice they have the exact same inode. All right, it is effectively a, a second file that that is uh, the, the, the item that we have. And if I were to, let's say I were to open uh, test file link in VI, here we have, this is a test file, let me add a line to that. All right, and then I cat test test file dot text. There's our second line. Notice also the permissions are the same with this hard link and file. Um, really, they're 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 in all intent and purposes the same thing. Now I'm sure there are experts out there in Linux that will argue that no hard link and a file is not the same thing. There probably is a difference, but for where I am in my studies and from what I've seen, they're basically the same thing. Um, as long as there is at least one um, one file for that inode, then the data is still there. For example, if I were to remove testfile.txt, all right, ls-l, notice how we don't have any kind of warning with this test file link. It's a hard link. It is a link to the inode itself. And so therefore, the all of the data and such is still where where it needs to be because the data the data is actually stored wherever that inode says that it is and basically a file is kind of a link for lack of a better phrase to that inode now i mentioned a moment ago about soft links being able to move between different file systems and and hard links are not able to do that well the, the reason being is the hard link is a link to the inode itself. It doesn't really care about the file necessarily. It cares about the inode, and that will not traverse um, file systems because inodes are specific for their file system. Whereas the soft link cares about the file name, and therefore it 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 uh, it, it can traverse. So, a bit long-winded, but I believe I've I've covered the um, the a the differences between hard and soft links, and then the actual objective is create hard and soft links, which you do that with the ln command and to, um, to create the soft link, you would do ln-s, whatever your target is, and then the link name, and then to create a hard link, ln, and then the um, target for your link, and then the link name. I hope you found this useful. If you did, make sure you click uh, like and subscribe. Also, feel free to share with others, and, and don't hesitate to comment yourself. As always, thanks for watching, and I'll see you the next time.